Is this the biggest football game in OSU history for the third time this year? I'm Barry Trammell, along with fellow Oklahoman columnist Jenny Carlson, and this is Press Row, live from the Opubco Studios in Oklahoma City. Bedlam 2009 arrives with the Cowboys a win away from their first major bowl game since 1946. Jenny, Georgia was a huge game in the opener. Then Texas on Halloween, basically for the Big 12 South title. Now OU comes with a Fiesta Bowl bid on the line. This is the season for huge OSU games. Yeah, it really has been. And, you know, you, keep, you think about that, and we said, wow, Georgia, it doesn't get any bigger than that. Well, then they've just continued to find themselves in big games, and I think that's because they're winning. I mean, this is, this is what you do when you start to ascend to a new level. Uh, I think there's been a lot of seasons where there's been a game that's been the biggest game, whether it's been Bedlam or an opener or uh, a Texas game. I mean, whatever the case is, Bedlam has, has largely been that game for OSU. But when you start to win games and try to play for BCS Bowls, Barry, I mean, that changes the equation. You're going to play more big games, and obviously this team has – fared well in one of those games and not so well in another. So it's going to be interesting to see how this team comes out now playing this first uh, big game on the road. This is the first time they've played one of these big games away from home. It'll be interesting to see how the Cowboys respond. Well, it will, and this is a situation where uh, Cowboys keep playing for different stakes. For national reputation in Georgia, they got up to number five with a victory. Yeah. Uh, for a conference championship against Texas, uh, lost and had to reassess, but now Trying to get to a Fiesta Bowl, uh, I think, is a huge thing for this team. If, if they could make a Fiesta Bowl, that's a hurdle that you really uh, weren't sure that when the Cowboys would get there. Uh, have not been in a major bowl since 1945 season, January 1st, 1946. Played in the Sugar Bowl against St. Mary's. I don't even know if the uh, you know if uh, St. Mary's still fields a football team out there in California. They were power in the 40s, but that was a long time ago. So huge, huge game. Uh, for the Cowboys. Mike Gundy says Zach Robinson will play, but he said that last week. Uh, turns out uh, Zach was unavailable. Can OSU win in Norman without Zach Robinson? Well, I think it becomes a much taller task. I won't say no because this has been a, a weird season in every way. Stuff that we didn't think would happen has happened. It seems like every week something different has uh, sort of surprised us about this year. So I'm not going to say there's no way but that curve for possible becomes a lot higher without Zach Robinson. That's a guy who knows what it's like to go on the road into these situations. He's clearly the leader of this team. As well as I thought Brandon Whedon played last week, and Barry, he played well. I mean, he sat on the sideline the whole first half and then comes out in the second half and looks like he's been running this offense forever. And the truth is he's been on the scout team much of uh, the year and much of his career at OSU. So as impressed as I was with him, Zach Robinson makes this game much more winnable for Oklahoma State. Um, and it will be interesting to see after last week we, we hear we think he'll play. And then it didn't, he didn't even practice. So, you know, we hear this week he's going to play. We assume that's going to be the case. But we'll see on Saturday who trots out there. Interesting, interestingly enough, 2001, last time Oklahoma State won in Norman, Cowboys did it with a backup quarterback. Everybody thinks Josh Fields started that day, but no, also Poe Guy, the starter down at Owen Field. Josh Fields comes in, leads the Cowboys to an improbable victory. Now, Bill Young's defense has made great strides, but OU's offense has been very good at home. Can the Cowboys turn this into a defensive struggle? <laughs> You never thought that OSU might be looking for a defensive struggle to win a game. But this defense is improved. Let's not, uh, let's not, uh, I think we might want, want to stop asking the question of, you know, is, is the defense getting some respect? I mean, this defense is a pretty darn good defense. They don't have any superstars on the defensive line, but I think when you start looking at the linebackers in the secondary, you're seeing some guys that individually are really stand out. Parrish Cox, I mean, that guy, Colorado kept throwing at him last week, Barry, and I think you and I both said, why do they keep throwing at him? All he does is knock it away or intercept a pass or make a great play. Parrish Cox is legitimate, and Pat Levine at linebacker has been really stellar. And that doesn't even start to talk about guys like uh, Donald Booker, who's just been great uh, back there for him, filling in for an injured Ori Lemon. Imagine if they had another linebacker who could potentially spell those guys. They'd be, uh, you know, even better. And then obviously the punisher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've got some guys that'll hit you back there. So this defense is really good, and I think they're going to, I think they're really going to force OU to decide 
you know, can they throw the ball? I think their secondary is pretty darn good, Barry, and it's going to be a tough task for the Sooners. And what's happened with that Oklahoma offensive line, uh, first of all, with the injuries and the uh, inefficiency, even when they've been healthy, uh, Oklahoma State has the big edge in the interior. I think that Oklahoma State defensive front uh, can control the game, and that will make a huge difference uh, for, uh, for the Cowboys. We'll find, all about, uh, find out all about it on Saturday. For complete Bedlam coverage all week, stay with News OK as well as every day in the Oklahoma.